welcome to my studio. I'm so excited to have you here for oil pastel painting. Let's start the most obvious place and that's our supplies. Now I know I've reviewed them a bit online on Instagram and Facebook, but I think it's good to be very thorough right now to explain to you exactly what you'll need. The good news is you don't need a lot to get started with oil pastel. In fact, it may be the medium that you need the least amount of supplies in order to be successful. You need paper, you need oil pastels, and you need some cleanup supplies. That's it. So let's talk about paper first. My favorite, as you've heard me or seen me write many times, is this Stonehenge printmaker's paper. Printmakers might be like monoprinting, lithographs, such as that, where you're, you're running them through a press. Well, they're really handy for a lot of other projects. I use them for all my mixed media. I love them for acrylic. Um, and oil pastels is fantastic as well. I probably would avoid using this for watercolor. However, this is one of my favorite and also very affordable. Um, I buy them in large sheets and I tear them down to the size that I want. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Another option, Strathmore, a very good brand. Uh, um, this is the best of the series. You could get any Strathmore brand mixed media paper. It'll work just fine. What's nice about it, we've already got our size determined for us. It's very heavyweight and it's smooth. I prefer smooth paper. You can do oil pastel and textured paper and some people prefer that. But I really like um, the fact that um, since I have to cover all this white with my pastels, that if there's no texture, that's easier to do. So there you go. There's a really nice quality already pre-cut for you. And if you want affordable, super affordable, you could buy the cheap packs of watercolor paper from Arteza or from Artist Loft. And they are heavyweight. The thing is, is that they do have a texture on them. But guess what? They have two sides. The opposite side is smooth. So this would be fine. All you're really looking for is a heavyweight paper. We're not adding water to this, so we don't have to worry about buckling. We don't have to worry about um, the paper pilling up like it might do with cheap watercolor paper if you're doing a watercolor painting. We're doing oil pastel paintings, so any heavyweight paper should do the trick, okay? Um, paper, pretty easy. Just get yourself something heavyweight. Try out different kinds. Your favorite, you'll know eventually. Now let's talk about these oil pastels. These are my favorite. You've heard me say a million times. I just love these Karandash. This set I bought probably five or six years ago, and you can see um, some I'm using up quite a bit, but there's a lot of colors here that I'm still making good use of. The dark colors last a really long time, so that's really good news. I have to buy white a lot, um, and a few of the other lighter colors that I really like, like um, this pale pink color, and some of the yellows, and the greens I use a lot of. So a few pieces, which is nice because you can buy them as a single piece, I have had to replace. But if you're going to invest and you really want to make something out of this type of a medium, don't hesitate to really put your um, investment in a good set. However, I know that's not possible for everyone and some of you are just trying to figure out if this is the medium for you. So I wanted to do a little discussion with you. First, let's talk about what is and what is not oil pastel. Let's start with this. It says Sennelier and it says pastel. However, this is chalk pastel. It's a soft, dusty chalk, pure pigment, and so much fun to use. However, that's not what this lesson is about today. So these pieces here that say pastel, they're chalk pastel, and that's not what we're doing. Um, and then the another thing, some artists have come to me and said, oh, I bought those Koran Ash, but they don't seem to work. That's because they bought Neocolor 1 or 2. Neocolor 1 is a wax pastel. It's not water soluble. This one, however, is water soluble. They are also tons of fun. All I have to do, scribble a bit, make my mark, and then, see how they go on a lot like crayons if I was to try and really build them up like a oil pastel painting. It's not going to quite work, but if I add water to it, I have a beautiful wash. 
So when it comes to mixed media, that would be a really fun product to have. But that's not what we're doing today. So I want to make sure you don't make the mistake of getting Caron d'Ache Neo Color 1 or 2. That's not what we want. We want the one that is in the red case and it says Neo Pastel. And it'll say right on there, Artists Oil Pastels. All right? Not water soluble, uh, but they're really, you know, they're fantastic. Now, let's talk about cleanup. Alrighty, I'm making a mess out of myself, so easy as can be, get yourself some inexpensive, preferably for me, it's unscented baby wipes. Um, there's a little bit of alcohol in them, so it cleans the pastel off your hands really easily, and much more easily than even going to the sink to wash up. So as you're going, that color is gonna build up on your fingers. This is the easiest way to get it off. Also, if you made a mistake and you've built up too many layers and you feel like you can't correct it and it's not blending right, here's your little blending tool and this will help you along the way. So get yourself some baby wipes. Also, pretty obvious, well, we need some paper towels. Really honestly, what I use the paper towels for most, um, I might wipe my fingers on them from time to time, but really when we're painting with oil pastel, the colors start blending on the tips of our pastel and we need to kind of wipe back those extra colors here. All right. So before we move on to testing out our oil pastels, I wanted to show you really quick how I changed the size of my Stonehenge paper. So this is one that I've already cut down to a size um, eight by 10. I thought that that was a nice size to work with. They come in really large sheets, actually. These are already torn down by, um, this is a quarter of a sheet. So they come in a 22 by 30. Um, and um, they're, they're less than $5 for a sheet of paper, which is great. So if you want to work really big, that's a good way to move um, bigger without having to spend a lot of money. Um, so this is what you do. You see this has a beautiful deckled edge. And I really like leaving those nice edges because if I'm not going to mat it with the mat over it, sometimes I like to float it and just leave a little gap of the glass between the artwork and the glass. And it just kind of, um, a professional framer knows how to do that. It just kind of floats in the, and it's mounted to the mat board. So that extra, um, that's why I paint all the way to the edges of all my paper. That extra deckled edge is so beautiful. Um, so to keep that kind of rough edge looking, all you got to do is tear your pages. So no cutting is necessary. What I do, I just fold them in half. Now, of course, if you want to measure it out to the size that you want, give yourself an extra half inch, quarter of an inch to half inch, centimeter if you're in Europe, um, using the smarter, better metric system. <laughs> and then, so we're just going to fold it in half and we're going to fold it in half again and make sure that your hands are clean because I'm making a mess out of this. But nonetheless, now, for tearing, I've got the contrast of this background. If you tear like this, you're just going to make it all wonky and it's going to rip the wrong way. So if you pull away, pulling it this way, away from each other instead of this way, down, you're going to get a much more even, easy to do torn edge. Now I've got a rough edge on all sides. Well, all it comes cut on one side, but I've got a rough edge on most of my sides. So if you really want, like here's a piece that's got rough edges on all of them. So if you want to be very thoughtful about your artwork and you want to be able to float it in a frame, I'll later on in this course show you some examples of how to frame and put your artwork together. This is what you do. You tear the edges. It's a lot easier than measuring and cutting, but if you really want a very specific size, um, of course, I've already put my, uh, here we go. So you can just take a look. This one's an 11 by seven and a half. So if I wanted like a five by seven, that seven and a half is good. If I take this 11 and I go down one more size, which is what I did for my whole project, it's a little bit bigger now than the mat board, which means there's plenty of lip for it to, to hide underneath, or it could be floating. Um, and that's a good size there for a small piece, right? But not always do we want small. And maybe on this one here I can say, all right, I like this. This is a rough edge here. 
this is a rough edge here this is a rough edge here and when I measure it I know that this size is 11 so I think I'm gonna go look at me I've just got oil pastel everywhere I think I'm gonna go with um, 10 by 8 by 10 because that's a good standard size for finding a frame although didn't I just say go a little bit larger I did and I'm already not following my own instructions that's so typical of me <laughs> all right so 10 and a quarter 10 and a quarter 10 and a quarter now I'm gonna go the other way and I'm gonna measure eight and a quarter this way eight and a quarter so we're just um, making our marks so that we can try and be even about this now of course that's gonna leave graphite so you're gonna want to use the opposite side of this paper might be a little trickier with this teeny piece so let's start with folding the larger length here because this one's going to be a little tricky. I fold backwards until my eyes can see it's even along here and I kind of push down until those lines have met up. I'm not always perfect at this. I'm an artist, not a mathematician, not a geometrist, but we do need math even when doing art. So there you go. I've got that fairly straight. I'm going to fold it back the other way. There we go. And I can just tear right on down that line. Save this piece. Even though it's got marks on it, it's okay because I'm going to cover the whole thing with oil pastel when I do my artwork. And maybe on this one I might say, okay, so this one is a little bit larger than six that length. I don't know what would make a really good exact but maybe we'll say it needs a couple inches off if I was to make a nice good shape that I feel like is a nice rectangle I like working in rectangles for florals it seems sometimes squares you could try a square but here we go that's a nice shape right we'll work on that one later and let's finish this one off this is a little trickier I feel like that might not be straight I didn't make it straight so let's try that again Side to side. Hope my eyes don't make a little trick on me. That's a little bit better. Now I'm going to go ahead and fold it both ways. I'm kind of just pressing over this teen, it's teeny little strip. But if you've got about an inch, you're good to go. Or a couple of centimeters. That's enough to be able to tear off that rough edge. Because remember, we're trying to make all of our edges these nice rough edges. Fold it back the other way. And then I'm going to still pull it away. Instead of pulling it down, I'm still pulling it away. All right, so there we go. That's a discard. And I have myself a nice 8 by 10, a little bit larger than 8 by 10, so that if I end up doing a lip around it for matting, we're perfectly good to go. All right, artists, let's test out our oil pastels. Yes, Neo Color is my favorite, but let's talk about Crayola brand. Crayola oil pastels and also another Crayola called um, portfolio series I had a lot of people who recommended this because they said that they were very soft and creamy and they loved using them and I also thought let's have a comparison with regular oil pastels these ones say water soluble so I'm going to show you why that's also going to not work the best for us these um, oil pastels here I've also tried Pentel and Craypaw um, which are okay. They're probably on the same par as these oil pastels, and I'm going to show you um, also why those are not my favorite. However, we do have a couple other options. Um, we have the cream of the crop. Everyone loves these Sennelier, and they are super rich, buttery, creamy, gorgeous. I have no complaints about these, except that my only reason why I prefer the Coronda Osh is because they're a little bit more firm okay and that gives me a little more control over detail but if you own some of these count yourself lucky and go ahead and use them okay uh, they are expensive there's no doubt one little box like this I found on sale for um, 50 and I thought that was a steal of a deal uh, most of the time you're gonna find them in the hundreds I also have the worst possible choice you could make which is the artist loft I had people message me and say oh my goodness there were like 
you know, 48 of them for $5. And I'm like, there's a reason why just buy a box of crayons or whatever, you know, just, I say no to the artist loft, big fat no. And I'm going to show you exactly why. All right. I'm going to get out these same set of primaries. I mean, come on. Why, why not? Well, let's stick with the primaries as after all with true colors. That's what I focus on quite a bit. And I have my Crayola brand here. And I have the portfolio, right? Um, let's see, there's the red and our blue and white. We need the white for blending and keeping things light because the number one problem I see people have, value. We'll be talking about that in another lesson. All right, and then finally, finally, the one that I've been talking about online quite a bit is this one here. Uh, Mungyo Gallery, which they do have a couple different lines. I believe I didn't realize they had more than one type of oil pastel. This says Artist Soft Oil Pastels. Um, there's links for everything if you haven't purchased yourself a set yet. But I was so surprised. These were 48 assorted colors for only $23 on Amazon. And guess what? They may not be my favorite Courant d'Ache, but if you're not ready to invest a million bucks, this is a great option. So let's show you, let's test them all out. Let me get this out of the way there. Let's get our favorite, or our basics, I should say. Our basics, the easiest to compare, right? And white. All right, put those back out of the way. And then I still haven't grabbed my Neo colors. I have a piece of paper here. I'm gonna use that inexpensive paper on the back side where it's smooth and I think it'll be just fine. Now these are a bit used up because these are my faves. Um, let's see blue and a yellow oh see this is what i'm talking about all this color from having blended and mixed before so i just wipe it off smooth it out put my paper down and you'll see me do that a lot while i'm doing this and white which also ends up pretty dirty quite quickly all right now i'm going to pull these aside and pull my paper over here and we're going to start showing you the difference between good quality oil pastel and the cheapies. Let's start with the cream of the crop. Let's start with this beautiful sennelier and it just goes on like a lipstick, covers up. See how quickly it covers up? My entire white is disappearing just like that, okay? So there's your Sennelier. I'm going to go ahead and just leave the one that I used at the top and I'll, I'll make a note of it afterwards. Then the next one on that list, Courant d'Ache. A little bit more firm, so it takes a little more pressure, but also rich color, thick, covers up everything. Fantastic. Now I'm going to go on with these oil pastels by Crayola, which the Craypaw and the Pentel are very similar to this. Here's the nice thing to start with. It does seem to fill up the page, right? But what you can't see is it's already starting to, um, it's starting to pill up. Well, sometimes I call them my little, the little boogers that start filming up here. I will take a closer picture of it for you in just a minute. Here's another one. It's, um, in the in this picture you can see it's it's covering up it is actually really soft and smooth but it's very thin and you can see you can definitely see that that's making a nice little mess right okay next on our list let's show i want to show you these artist loft already very thin very waxy very transparent and not covering a lot so what's going to happen when you use this, the cheapest of the cheap, is you're going to think that you hate oil pastels and that it's not the medium for you. And the reason why is because they suck. I mean, flat out, I will tell you, they suck really bad. And when they suck, it's harder for you to create the artwork that you imagine in your mind. 
and you're going to be challenged. And I'd say that probably with almost all art supplies. When you buy the cheapest thing possible, you're going to struggle more um, and you're going to use more product because there's not a lot of pigment in that. Now, our final test would be this um, Mungo Gallery, which goes on beautifully thick. No pilling up, no little boogers coming off of it. Nice and thick. In fact, it's just as rich as this one here without pilling up. All right. Now, I could definitely do all of these. Let me run down the list. Now let's take a little bit closer look at this. All right, so as you can see, here we go. Sennelier, smooth and wonderful. Cron d'Ache, not so bad, although I did have a little bit of extra color mix in there by accident. Here we go with the Crayola. The Crayola is leaving a lot of these, what I call boogers, and the other brand, the portfolios, doing the same. Also. You can see that they're a little more transparent. Now here's the worst of the worst. There's our um, Artist Loft brand from Michaels. Um, they're transparent and the harder you work at scribbling with them, the more it peels up all of the layers. Not such a great thing. And then here's our Mungo um, gallery line, which they are smooth and creamy and very um, saturated and filling up the space. All right, so you can see just by looking at them here, how they're comparing. But the real test, the real test is how do they blend with white? So I'm gonna go ahead and use them in the same order that we had. We have Sennelier white. And when I put it on there, that white is very opaque. It's covering right up over it. Now, of course, since I'm dipping on the red, I get red on here. So I just wipe off really quick and I can start my blue. And you can see they're blending quite beautifully. Okay, so I'm going to make green over here. That wasn't intentional, but you get the idea. I can take my finger and I can blend that. Actually, that made a really beautiful light green. That wasn't my intention, but you can see it works. It blends really beautifully. I just wipe my finger before I go and blend again so that I'm not cross-contaminating those colors. And it's just making this really gorgeous um, layer, okay? And let's try the next one, which is our Courant d'Ache. It's the same thing. Very opaque. In fact, that one's even more opaque than the Sennelier. And, um, and I can just paint right over it, which means that I can create really beautiful layers and depth because of this white pastel. Also, again, I'm making green. I guess that's just going to be my tradition here. Let's make a little green along the way. Now, clean finger, and I'm going to blend. Also blends very easily. You can blend them in any way, just back and forth in round circles. Doesn't really matter, just clean your finger in between. Also blending beautifully. All right, now let's move on. What was our next one on this list? That's Crayola. Here's our Crayola white. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure the tip is clean and then let you see. Nothing is happening. Here's your first clue that it's not the very best this white is not strong enough, and also we're not blending. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just do all of them the same. Here we go. Also not white enough, there's no opaqueness. Opaqueness means no transparency, rich enough to cover the layer underneath. I mean, my white is never gonna be perfect, but um, here we go. We're not getting anything. It's kind of pulling up all of the oil pastel and scraping it back, so that's not a good thing. Um, and then when I use my finger to blend, no blending is happening. In fact, what's happening is it's just kind of rubbing around and rubbing off of my paper. So cheapies that are, that are like the Crayola, Pentel, and Craypaw, that's pretty much the experience I have with them over and over again. The first layer is fine, so if you're just looking for a quick kids project, by all means, use them. But if you're looking to blend like an oil pastel painting, like what we're doing, that's not gonna cut it. Now, same problem with the portfolio. 
I can see that a little bit more the layers are happening but when we go to blend with our finger you're gonna see um, not gonna work so great and also the other thing is is these are water soluble so they are oil based and don't ask me how they do it oops I'm making purple see that's why you got to always clean your finger off give it a little more white um, uh, just like oil, water soluble oil paints I guess is really what it comes down to but I find that it doesn't leave me with as rich of a blend like these are look at how much smoother and prettier that is so uh, in fact really quick let's test what happens with this if I add a little water all right they're a little bit water soluble and coming off so that's not our goal so let's say no to those of course all right, I don't even want to do the demo of the artist loft because I abhor it so much. But just to show you, all I'm doing is scraping back and making a big waxy mess. I don't even think they use real oil. They probably just use wax. They're so cheap. Everything they make is cheap. I don't mind their um, our, our professional level canvases. But everything else Michaels makes in the artist loft brand is, yeah not worth spending your money on at all because you end up with an ugly mess now here's the thing I already know what's gonna happen because I've done this before I love this first layer when I go to use this it's not as rich and opaque it is blending okay and if you didn't want a whole lot of really dark white it's okay it's just not as opaque and beautiful and doesn't blend quite as well as the two expensive brands over here however I have a solution for you if you haven't already heard my solution so it took me a lot more layers to get that and it's kind of pulling up the bottom layer just a little bit and of course I add blue because what am I doing here I'm making mud on all of these so if I try to blend it it does blend fine my finger is blending it it doesn't blend as buttery as these are but it's still working so for all intents and purposes you can get this set and you'll have fairly good success with all the lessons that I'm going to teach you. However, you're not going to get the whitest white. So my solution, I have a solution. Grab yourself either a Sennelier or a Cron d'Ache. They sell them in singles, so you don't have to buy a whole pack. And use that as your white. So now here we go. Very opaque. Covers it up right oh and I'm gonna make green again I just did that on every single one of them sometimes I am the absent-minded artist and now it's blending beautifully so problem solved $23 set and some $5 approximately oil pastels um, white pastels and you've got yourself a set that you can work with to make an oil pastel painting I think we need to take a look at these a little bit closer and I will show you the blended all right and here you have for reference for reference artists you can see how this is the um, the worst of the worst and that's the artist loft brand all pilling up and not blending at all I don't think there's any hope for that um, toss them in the garbage folks toss them in the garbage here's your Crayola brands both the water soluble and the regular oil pastel they don't blend very well at all so um, I think you're gonna end up finding yourself very frustrated if you tried to use one of those types of brands Pentel Craypaw they they all are pretty much the same as far as this Crayola oil pastel I have used them all in the past to teach classes and uh, my students were not very happy with the results However, had I known that this was a great option, then I would have purchased these. In fact, of course, I did purchase a set, and I'm pretty satisfied with how that can blend up, especially if we wanted to just use white from a more expensive brand. So, and then, of course, you can see, rich, creamy, easy to blend. You're going to get a painting out of these, and that's our number one goal. All right? So I hope this was a helpful, very thorough explanation of what you need to do oil pastel i think we're gonna have a lot of fun artists are you ready let's go